Hello, everyone. It is Mark Berman from TV Media Insights. It is Monday, August 13th. I would like to welcome you back to our daily video cast, and I hope everybody had a great weekend. I had a very good one, and I'm going to talk about that momentarily. Now, let's begin with animated comedy, South Park on Comedy Central. It is turning 25 years old today. South Park debuted on Comedy Central on this day in 1997. To date, they have aired 230 episodes. The next batch of originals will begin in late September. And like The Simpsons, this is an animated series that could probably outlive all of us. Now, you know, it's interesting. I don't really like any of the current animation, but that's not to say I am not a big fan of TV animation. Way back when, when I was a kid um, and a young teenager, I would watch so many animated comedies on Saturday morning. I remember Johnny Quest, The Groovy Ghoulies, Wacky Races, Penelope Pit Stop. Sunday morning, I'd watch Aquaman. I used to really like Davy and Goliath, by the way. Davy, remember that? Well, it's interesting because this past Saturday, I went to a reunion, a neighborhood reunion. I grew up in Flushing, Queens, and there was an Electchester Pomonac reunion. Those were two apartment complexes, and it was at the local bowling alley, Jib Lane's. When I was about, I guess about 13, my mother decided that I was watching too much television, so she shipped me off to Bowling Ling on Saturday morning. So I'd get up on Saturday morning, I'd watch Groovy Ghoulies, go bowling, come home <laughs> and watch more television. But it was so cool being back there. And the reason why I mention this is, you know, let's go back to the 1970s, if you grew up in that era. We had three broadcast networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. We normally had three independent stations, and we had PBS, yet... There was always something on the air to watch. There are over 100 channels now at our disposal. And how many times do we go to our TVs, turn it on, and say there's nothing to watch? But back then, there was so much good television. And I remember going in high school, coming to school on a Friday morning, and the cool kids would be talking about Welcome Back, Hatter, which was on the night before. And I was the kid watching The Waltons because I never missed it. And I remember those Saturday nights, those classic Saturdays, All in the Family, MASH, The Jeffersons, Mary Tyler Moore, Bob Newhart, Carol Burnett. Later in the 70s, we had The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. I remember on Mondays watching Rhoda and Phyllis and Maud. We had a Y50 on Tuesday. I mean, the list went on and on and on. And of course, Friday night, how could you forget about The Brady Bunch, The Partridge Family, Room 222, The Odd Couple, and Love American Style. So I'm feeling very nostalgic today because I went to this reunion, had a great time. And I just thought it would be a good segue going from South Park into animation into this reunion. But, again, we have so many channel options, and yet there are so few shows to watch so many times. I miss the old days of television. That's just how I feel. Now, let's go to the Olympics. It concluded last night. For me, personally, I'm glad it's over. Do you know how boring it was every day for two weeks to say NBC was number one, and this is what the Olympics did. There was nothing else to talk about. I congratulate NBC. This was a slam dunk victory for them. According to the first 16 nights to date, my latest data shows that the London Olympics averaged per night 31.1 million viewers. If you compare that to Beijing in 2008, and I'm looking at my cheat sheet, that is up by 12%. If you compare it to Athens and 2004, that is up by 25%. The London Olympics is poised to be the most watched event ever in television history. So for NBC, slam dunk victory. Now, I didn't stay up late enough to watch the debut or the preview of Animal Practice on NBC. I don't have the overnights yet, and I believe the Olympics concluded at 10.58. So keep in mind that when I talk about Animal Practice in today's newsletter, it will be a, uh, a after prime time. But again, I'm sure animal practice got sampled, but it doesn't come back for like another month. And that, of course, means that people could ultimately forget about it. But congratulations, NBC. There's nothing, nothing negative to say about the Olympics. And in fact, the weekday show, which was hosted by Al Michaels and Dan Patrick, averaged 7.1 million viewers, which is now also a record for anything in uh, Summer Olympics in daytime. Another record. So all good. All good information. Now, what I have on today's newsletter, and I've, I'm repeating myself on occasion because I want you to see this. I have our new series odds, which we handicap from even, which is the best, to 10 to 1 the worst. We have our cancellation clock contest compiled by Douglas Pucci. You can go in and give us what you think is the first cancellation or what will be the first cancellation of the season. And I have my fall 2012 network analyses. In the world of cable, Stacey Keebler 
who happens to be the girlfriend of George Clooney. She will be hosting upcoming lifetime reality competition, Supermarket Superstars. And that will feature aspiring food product inventors pitching their creations for a chance to have it launched in a major grocery chain. What will they think of next in reality? And that is our daily video cast from TV Media Insights. I want to thank you very much for joining me. And I will be back with more news about my favorite medium, television, tomorrow. Signing off, Mark Berman.